Hi guys, welcome to Case for Tips. I'm Project K, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I produced that score for that trailer that I showed you the mix of last week. Okay, um, basically I love FL Studio. That's my go-to program for pretty much all my production. Occasionally I would use Logic or Pro Tools or whatever the case is, but usually I like just to mix in Pro Tools and work with just audio files and do edits and whatever the case is and do actual production in FL Studio because I just find it more intuitive and yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through basically the different uh, patterns, that's what they're called, which is basically like the different melodies or drum loops or whatever the case is that I use for the score. And then what I'll do is after that, I'll show you guys the different instruments I used. Okay, um, let's go through the patterns. So I've got, I name everything when I'm working. This here is a placeholder for a blank. So I'll just usually just press F2 and I'll just press the dash a couple of times and then I'll know that I'm not using that channel. I'm just using it for like an ending or whatever the case is. Um, okay, let's go through the patterns. Switch to pattern mode, song and pattern mode. Go to beat and you'll see here I'm using this percussion MIDI out, which is actually going to contact. I'll show you the instrument later. And I'm just playing a few notes. So boys. Pretty cool. Okay, next pattern. I've got an impact here. Let's play just the impact. That's how it's played. Okay, and then let's play just the percussion. In case you're wondering, uh, the velocity does affect these drums. I'll give you an example. This is quite soft, as you can see there, right? I'll put it here. But the minute I go louder, so if I go, if I go, see, you get a different tone out of it. So keep that in mind when you're designing your drum loops. And then this is the same beat, but with just an impact, a single one. And then the same beat. I'm here I'm using, let's go back to the impact. So I've got this one impact play. There, and now I've got the next pattern, which is this beat here. I've got these um, hits. It's pretty cool. So I've got it's like distorted hits, which are pretty cool. I keep duplicating stuff. Okay, now I got this percussion note. And see, I've got a softer one there, just so I don't want it to hit hard. I just wanted it to fill in that little section there between. Let's see. Pretty cool. Beat four is actually the final one. Let's play from the top. So if you come here, let's play the these two by themselves. So we got this impact. We got. And when that happens, so that's what it does. Cool. Now I've got my percussion, which is quite cool. Let's turn that on. You pull, if you control click on these, it solos it. Just a little tip there. Now you can see there's different velocities for, although I've duplicated what I played here, I've got different velocities for this version of it. So these are like a plastic drum kind of sound and these almost like side, like rooms. And this here is like a snare. So if you listen to it. And I'm playing it. 
with these plastic and they give you this really cool impact so if I play it all together cool now let's look at some of the effects I used on some of these channels um, specifically this one okay I've got the CLAM plugged on that if I take it off like so Put it on. It's just adding a little bit of reverb and a bit of EQ and some compression, but it's generally there. Like for me, picking the sounds is the most important part. And on that note, let's go through some of those sounds. Okay. I'm going to open my contact five here. Okay. Do one at a time. Okay. So I've got my. got my emotional piano by tone hammer i've got the sweat bunker i kind of like it a bit i think i tweaked a few things about like i tweaked i think probably like the um, reverb settings and stuff like that, just until it sounded right to me because for me it's like i already have an idea of what i want in my head i just need the sounds to bring it out okay and then um if we move on to like the strings the now if I open the mixer huh? see it's a CLA guitars which is a bit strange but if you think about it and turn this off I just wanted those strings to be a little bit more bitey that's all really so I just picked a preset, tweaked a few things, and I was happy. Then, um, let's take out one, which I'm also using some phobia on that. Let me just open all of these. Let's take out uh, which would be also some phobia. I think effects I probably use unplugged or CLA guitars. What I use for that? Let's see. Hmm, I'll see some folio. Uh, now if we look here on the horns, I've also got a CLA guitar. But if you can see, I can also I'm also using the um, the um, Futi EQ here. I used Big Sky because I wanted it to be quite huge and whatever the case is, and wanted to add a bit of brightness to it a bit. If I turn off the actual effect. Just helped enhance that a little bit. Now I wanted it to be stereo separated quite a lot. And then brass, bright. Now these are the really interesting sounds, I would say. I'm using Damage, also by Native Instruments, which is quite cool. I'm using, it's called Dark Impacts. It's quite cool. Um, let's see what I, I don't, don't don't think I'm doing anything on the mixer really. Let's see. No, not a thing. I'm happy with it out the box. It's amazing, and the same with the impact. I think I may have turned the volume of those down a bit. Yeah, these are quite turned down a little bit. These are dark damage hit impact. Then we got our tails. Uh, the ones we used in the intro. And you can see there's nothing on that. I'm happy with those sounds straight out the box. Damage is probably like one of my favorite libraries out of contact. And then I've got uh, the tremolo strings. Uh, let's see what we did to that. Tremolo strings, nothing. I was happy out of the box. Yeah, I was happy with that. Now this is a really cool plugin. One of my favorite. Let's see, what are we playing? We're playing in with the horns. Yeah. And I'm just playing really low notes. Well, it's going to channel 10. So, uh, let's change that. It's like a G2 or something, a G3. It's an octave. Um, yeah, 
I just hoard some of that, give it a bit of stereo width, rolled off a lot of the highs and turned up the stereo separation so it's quite big, you know. That was fun. Percussion. I had a limit on it, but I didn't like what it was doing, so I turned it off. Um, the percussion. What am I using for the percussion? Yeah. Let's turn this on. Open contact. That's yeah, damage again. I really like damage. I'm just using a, a percussion ensemble from the damage pack. I got cinematic guitars for those two guitars. Uh, Riders of the Storm and I think Voyager. Yeah. Oh, fat Strat. I think I had like some ops going on that one there. And so and then um, I used some of the, the cellos just to help. I use some of the cellos from the um, the contact bank itself. And those sound awesome. So yeah, that's basically sound wise what I did. Like I said, I always say to people like I like to to have the sound or at least close to what the final sound is while I'm producing. So I end up using a bit of, you know, effects and stuff like that while I'm actually producing like I'll I'll throw on a limiter a compressor uh, you know reverbs whatever I need in order to actually help me sell the whole thing because for me it's it's a lot about getting the initial sound before I actually play the instrument and that's the big thing for me so now let's talk about these guitars here for a minute This this guitar is not really a bass guitar per se, but I liked the rumbly tone at the bottom. So what I did was, if you look here, I had to put it through a guitar rig, and uh, I'm using a slap bass preset. And if I turn it on. There you go. And that's how you can get like some sound design stuff going on there. Um, the Pregiator, I flanged it a bit. Uh, I think it's here. Let's open that mixer again. The, I'll solo this here. It just helps smudge the sound a bit so it's not so direct. The reason I use the flange there is just because I realized that it was too direct and I don't want it so in your face and I just wanted it to blend underneath the strings that were running constantly. For me it was about creating contrast about something beautiful and epic because it's a score but then creating contrast using the synths because it it kind of tells you that we're moving towards the future because it's more electronic instruments i don't know i'm I'm being, I'm being a little bit philosophical about it but that's why i use them basically so yeah that's basically how i made the score i really hope that me showing you this helps people understand my workflow and how I think about stuff and maybe it'll help you create your own workflow and your own style and stuff like and think about the decisions you make because you can literally make this in 30 minutes but it should take you four hours because you're taking a little bit more time to consider the sounds you're picking and what they translate and what they make people feel because at the end of the day music is just sounds and notes and you know in time at different points in time and what we do with those sounds and those notes translates into emotions and feelings in other people and what what are you trying to get out by creating whatever piece of music you're making at that point in time so here we go i'm gonna play this back and you guys tell me what it makes you feel
now I, I hope you guys can see the difference between the production version of this score and the mixed version of the score and what I had to do to it in mixed stage in order for it to become what it is at the end. And you almost need to know that before you actually start making the song. Okay. Sometimes it's, it's fine to figure it out on the way. Whatever works for you. Anyways, I'm Project K. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And see you guys next time. Yes, sir.